Dear student, I am Dr. Prakash Mungli, Professor of Biochemistry. So in this lecture, I will be explaining you porphyrias. Let's get into the details. Porphyrias are a group of rare genetic disorders of heme biosynthesis. All porphyrias, they follow autosomal dominant inheritance pattern except congenital erythropoietic porphyria and delta amino levolinic acid dehydratase deficiency which will follow autosomal recessive inheritance pattern and then delta amino levolinate synthase enzyme deficiency which will lead to sideroblastic anemia it will follow X-linked recessive inheritance pattern. So other than these three all other porphyrias follow autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. Now in porphyrias Heme synthesis intermediates will accumulate in the tissue and then will be excreted in the urine. And porphyrias are exacerbated or triggered by certain drugs, chemicals, foods and also upon exposure to sunlight uh, because certain drugs, chemicals and foods will induce cytochrome P450 enzymes and cytochrome P450 enzyme needs heme and heme synthesis pathway will be increased and that will lead to accumulation of met uh, heme synthesis intermediates wherever the block is there in that uh, disorder. So that's how uh, certain drugs, chemicals, foods will exacerbate or trigger the disease and exposure to sunlight will exacerbate the disease condition because sunlight will lead to uh, absorption of light by the porphyrin which were porphyrinogens converted to porphyrins and porphyrins are further leading to uh, generation of reactive oxygen species and that can lead to photosensitivity and photosensitivity leading to photodermatitis and related signs and symptoms. So that is how uh, porphyrias will be diseases, some of the porphyrias, not all of them will be exacerbated upon exposure to sunlight. Now, the third point in uh, salient features of hereditary porphyria is increased expression of allosynthase by derepression process happens in uh, porphyrias. And the fourth point is accumulated uroporphyrin is excreted in the urine, protoporphyrin is excreted in the feces and coproporphyrin is excreted by either route. So these are the silent features of hereditary porphyrias. Now, some more into that list, porphyrias often make their appearance after puberty and the level of metabolic block, it determines uh, clinical features. Earlier the block like early block in the pathway before porphyrin ring formation happens. So usually that type of uh, disorders will have higher neurological signs due to accumulation of ALA that is amino level in it dehydratase and also porphobilinogen molecule on the neuronal function. If the block is later in the pathway that is after the formation of porphyrin ring uh, that is after the formation of porphobilinogen going into uroporphyrinogen 3 molecules. So usually that will manifest mainly with the cutaneous signs. This is something that will help you to understand what is the predominant sign in the specific type of porphyria. You got to look at whether the pathway is blocked in the earlier stage or in the later stage. So we will have to look at that uh, porphobilinogen formation and uh, later on if it is later on it is more of cutaneous signs, if it is earlier it is more of uh, neurological. It is just a predominant one although there can be mixture of those signs but what predominates that is the one that will help in the diagnosis. And the last one uh, here is a treatment involves administration of hemine and large doses of uh, glucose will help in alle uh, alleviating the signs and symptoms in porphyrias. Now depending on the predominant tissue or cell uh, where the enzyme deficiency is seen, so porphyrias can be broadly classified into hepatic porphyrias and erythropoietic porphyrias. Hepatic porphyrias are inherited enzyme deficiencies predominantly seen in the liver whereas erythropoietic porphyrias are due to inherited enzyme deficiencies generally seen in the bone marrow, it is there in the name. So what are the hepatic porphyrias? Hepatic porphyrias includes acute intermittent porphyria 
porphyria cutanea tarda hereditary copra porphyria and variegate porphyria so there are four of them in hepatic category whereas in erythropoietic category there are two of them one is congenital erythropoietic porphyria and the second is erythropoietic protoporphyria so it is there in the name both of the disorders will have a, that erythropoietic component so congenital erythropoietic porphyria erythropoietic protoporphyria so that makes it easier to know which porphyrias are erythropoietic there now here is the pathway for heme synthesis so let me quickly uh, review that for you and then we will go into individual disorders as per the enzyme that is deficient so the very first reaction is condensation of succinyl coa with glycine to make delta amino lavalinic acid done by delta amino lavalinic acid synthase and then uh, two delta amino amino lavalinic acids condenses with one another to make porphobilinogen done by delta amino lavalinate dehydratase enzyme and then four molecules of porphobilinogen condenses with one another to make hydroxymethyl bilane and that is done by porphobilinogen deaminase which is also called as hydroxymethyl bilane synthase which is also called as uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase there are three names there and then hydroxymethyl bilane it is going to undergo cyclization process done by uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase and the uroporphyrinogen 3 undergoes decarboxylation to become copropyrinogen 3 done by uroporphyrinogen 3 decarboxylase and then the copropyrinogen 3 will be converted to protoporphyrinogen 9 that will be done by copropyrinogen oxidase enzyme and the protoporphyrinogen 9 will be converted to protoporphyrin 9 done by protoporphyrinogen oxidase enzyme and finally protoporphyrin 9 is incorporated with ferrocyrin to become heme and that is done by ferrocylatase enzyme and heme will have a negative feedback effect on delta amino levelinate synthase number 1 enzyme because delta amino levelinate synthase 2 in the erythroid tissue is not feedback inhibited by heme we have seen that in the heme biosynthesis and regulation lecture already now let us look at the block and corresponding diseases so the very first enzyme that is delta amino levelinic acid synthase if it is decreased or if there is a mutation in a gene that is coding for delta amino levelinic acid synthase it will give rise to especially in the erythroid tissue which is coding for delta amino levelinate synthase number 2 it will give rise to a disease called X-linked sideroblastic anemia that is only for delta amino levelinic acid synthase number 2 which is not written here so it is not placed under porphyria category because succinyl coa glycine they are all in that like individual form uh, so nothing happens so we don't generally see porphyria but you will see decrease in hemoglobin synthesis because heme is not formed so that leads to anemia signs and symptoms so not necessarily porphyria signs so there it's not porphyria there let's look at what causes porphyria second enzyme in the pathway delta amino levelinate dehydratase if this enzyme is deficient so it will give rise to delta amino levelinate dehydratase porphyria delta amino levelinate dehydratase deficiency because deficiency of delta amino levelinate dehydratase enzyme lead to elevation of delta amino levelinate and that can lead to uh, interference with the neuronal metabolism and all that the neurological signs can be seen now the second enzyme in the pathway it is porphobilinogen deaminase which is condensing four molecules of porphobilinogen to make hydroxymethyl bilane so once hydroxymethyl bilane is made that is a linear tetrapyral not at uh, porpho porphyrinogen is not at synthesized so it is the just a linear tetrapyral so deficiency in porphobilinogen deaminase it will give rise to acute intermittent porphyria again in this particular disorder there will be neurological issues because there will be rise in porphobilinogen which will lead to rise in 
delta amino lavulinic acid so both porphyrinogens and delta amino lavulinates will interfere with neuronal metabolism so neuronal signs will be seen so as per our understanding salient features of hereditary porphyria so earlier the block higher the neuronal signs so it follows it now third enzyme third enzyme in the pathway is uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase where hydroxymethyl bilane is cyclized into uroporphyrinogen 3 so deficiency of uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase enzyme it will give rise to congenital erythropoietic porphyria it's an erythropoietic disease it is involving bone marrow there generally it is seen in that particular tissue now the fourth enzyme in the pathway is uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase which is converting uroporphyrinogen 3 into copropyrinogen 3 so deficiency in this enzyme it will give rise to porphyria cutanea tarda and that means there will be rise in uroporphyrinogen 3 molecules and these uroporphyrinogen 3 molecules later can be converted to oxidized into uroporphyrin molecules and all that will give rise to photosensitivity now already uroporphyrinogen is made and now you are below the pathway later on the pathway so now most of them uh, photosensitivity signs will start starting from the porphyrin uh, porphyria cutanea tarda onwards you will see the photosensitivity signs generally even that includes uh, congenital erythropoietic porphyry also so photosensitivity signs will start from here photosensitivity and up here neurological signs so this is how you can uh, broadly look at a uh, major signs so it's all predominant signs although there can be mix up of signs but predominantly earlier the pathway and later on the pathway okay so the fourth fifth enzyme leading to porphyria is a copropyrinogen oxidase copropyrinogen oxidase enzyme deficiency it will give rise to hereditary copropyrinogen and then protoporphyrinogen oxidase is our next enzyme this enzyme deficiency will give rise to variegate porphyria and the final enzyme is ferro chelatase deficiency of this enzyme will give rise to erythropoietic protoporphyria so like this deficiency in each one of these enzymes will give rise to different types of porphyria now let's look into acute intermittent porphyria acute intermittent porphyria is the second most common porphyria which is observed in more commonly in females although it is an autosomal dominant condition but still frequency of this disease has been seen more in uh, females the enzyme that is deficient in acute intermittent porphyria is porphobilinogen deaminase enzyme as i told you earlier other name of this enzyme is also hmb synthase or it is referred as uroporphyrinogen 1 synthase so here in this disease there will be accumulation of ala and porphobilinogen that is referred as pbg and this appears in the plasma and later in the urine and ala and porphobilinogen these metabolites they will predominantly act on the nervous system to cause variety of neurological signs and symptoms so it is more of predominantly neurological signs you are going to see in this particular disease that goes as per our understanding earlier the block so more the neurological signs remember that now what all the signs we see here patient will show ac intermittent acute abdominal pain this happens without any anatomical cause make sure you know that there won't be any anatomical cause but there will be severe abdominal pain as if there is a, a intersusception of the intestine or rupture of uh, abdominal cavity something like that acute uh, uh, abdominal emergency that type of pain you are going to see here which is an intermittent in nature so that is acute in abdominal pain without any anatomical cause acute neuropathy muscle weakness and seizures are also seen other than this like patient will show neuropsychiatric symptoms and that includes hallucination depression anxiety being paranoid 
that kind of signs can be seen in acute intermittent porphyria and then cardiac arrhythmias can be seen including like tachycardia develop as autonomic nervous system is affected. So these are all the neurological signs most of them are like neurological issues which are seen in acute intermittent porphyria. Generally these patients they do not show photosensitivity. The urinary excretion of ALA and PBG is increased as expected. Uh, this will be increased more during acute porphyric attack and the urine sample is colorless because AL and PBG being colorless compounds. Only the porphyrins are the colored molecules. So in acute intermittent porphyria, the urine color do not give the diagnosis. Whereas in other later on like porphyrias like porphyria cutanea tardan later because of appearance of uroporphyrinogen converted to uroporphyrin which become a red colored urine that will help in the diagnosis whereas in acute intermittent porphyria ALA and PBG although present in higher concentration in the urine generally urine color is not red here. So but it increases in color and intensity upon standing because of photo oxidation of PBG to porphobilin. So that is auto oxidation process so where the intensity might increase but it is not really the intense red color that we see in other kinds of porphyria. Now treatment includes withdrawal of any offending drug and later infusion with the hematin that is hematin represses ala synthase enzyme and also carbohydrate rich diet or glucose infusion will also repress allosin and this is how a infusion of hemin or IV glucose will help in the treatment of acute intermittent porphyria because by giving this we are targeting very first enzyme in the heme synthesis pathway whereby we decrease the accumulation of ALA and PBG. Okay. So an acute porphyric attack is precipitated by starvation and by drugs like barbiturates, phenytoin and other drugs that induce synthesis of cytochrome P450 and such drugs therefore must be avoided to prevent acute porphyric attack. So that is about acute intermittent porphyria. Now let us move on to see congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Congenital erythropoietic porphyria is also called as Gunther disease. It is an autosomal recessive condition uh, unlike other porphyrias which are usually autosomal dominant. Deficiency here is uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase. So it is an erythropoietic type of porphyria. So there is a decreased conversion of hydroxymethylbilane to uroporphyrinogen 3 because that is what is the function of uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase. It causes ring closure converting linear tetrapyrrole that is hydroxymethylbilane into uroporphyrinogen 3 molecule. So now what happens when this enzyme is deficient? So hydroxymethylbilane is spontaneously converted into uroporphyrinogen 1. We have seen that in the pathway in uh, my previous lecture on heme biosynthesis and regulation. So when hydroxymethylbilane has two fate, it can go into uroporphyrinogen 3 formation by uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase. Let me write it down. So HMB hydroxymethylbilane, it can go into uroporphyrinogen, uroporphyrinogen 3 done by uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase that is an enzyme, it is an enzyme mediated reaction. So to make uroporphyrinogen 3 or it can go into uro uroporphyrinogen 1 and that is spontaneous reaction especially when it is accumulated. So now what happens? There is a blockage in the uroporphyrinogen 3 cosynthase enzyme. It is not going on sufficiently deficient. So that means HMB will go towards uroporphyrinogen 1 formation. So there is increase in uroporphyrinogen 1. And this uroporphyrin, so which under the influence of uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase may be further converted into coproporphyrinogen 1. So uro will be converted to copro 
porphyrinogen 1. So, coproporphyrinogen 1. So, there increases accumulation of coproporphyrinogen 1 also. So, in congenital erythropoietic porphyria, so there is elevation of uroporphyrinogen 1 and coproporphyrinogen 1 and both of them can undergo oxidation to become their corresponding molecules. Uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin. One. So, uroporphyrinogen to co uroporphyrin, coproporphyrinogen into coproporphyrin. That's what happens, oxidation. So, patient will show accumulation of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 isomers in the bone marrow, RBCs, plasma and urine. This is how congenital erythropoietic porphyria patient will show increased levels of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1. Although deficient enzyme is uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase. Now, because of the increased presence of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 in the body fluids including the urine, so, so patient will show pink to dark red color in the teeth, bones and urine. That is something is interesting uh, finding here. Dark red urine that is referred as pot wine appearance and red brown teeth called as erythrodontia or pathognomonic signs of congenital erythropoietic porphyria. Make sure you remember these findings because if these findings are given in the stem, K stem, that will definitely help in the diagnosis process. So, look for pink to dark red color teeth, bones and urine. So, that means dark red urine which is referred as pot wine appearance and dark brown teeth referred as erythrodontia. These are pathognomonic. What is the meaning of pathognomonic? Pathognomonic means if that sign is there, that gives a definite diagnosis. Nothing else show that kind of sign. No other disease. You are going to see such things in no other disease other, other than this disease. That is what is called as pathognomonic that gives a diagnosis. Okay? Look for that. Now, excess porphyrins from bone marrow erythrocytes precursors are transported via plasma to the skin and that will lead to cutaneous photosensitivity. And that means congenital erythropoietic porphyria will show photosensitivity. That's why you look at this slide, I have included congenital erythropoietic porphyria, porphyria cutaneate order, hereditary coproporphyria, variegate protoporphyria and erythropoietic protoporphyria, all of them will showing photosensitivity signs. So, going by that, congenital erythropoietic porphyria will show photosensitivity, cutaneous photosensitivity. So, what all the signs with the cutaneous photosensitivity? So, we have itching, burning, redness, swelling that occur initially and may lead to hyperpigmentation hypertrichosis of the face and extremities later leads to a typical facial deformity referred as monkey faces. Because of all these photosensitivity signs like itching, burning, redness, swelling and then further as this process goes on and on it may lead to hyperpigmentation, hypertrichosis of the face that means more hair growth in the face and extremities. Imagine that is lot of pigmentation and hair is growing on the face and on the extremities, right. So, that will give rise to a monkey faces. That means, patient with congenital erythropoietic porphyria will show a face which is like a, which we can correlate with the face of the monkey. Why? Because it is hyperpigmented and lot of hair growth will be there which is called as hypertrichosis of the face ok. So, that is something you will have to look for. Now, the deficient production of type 3 uroporphyrinogen isomer diminishes the regulatory effect on allosynthase enzyme which further increases the levels of type 1 isomers leading to accumulation of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1. Excessive amount of these porphyrins in the erythrocytes may produce hemolysis. 
so that's why there can be hemolytic anemia in congenital erythropoietic porphyria prenatal diagnosis is possible by, by measuring uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 in amniotic fluids or we can measure uh, uroporphyrinogen 3 co-synthase enzyme activity in the amniotic cells or chorionic villi thereby making a prenatal diagnosis coming to porphyria cutanea tarda porphyria cutanea tarda is the most common type of porphyria deficient enzyme here is a cytosolic uroporphyrinogen 3 decarboxylase that means it leads to accumulation of uroporphyrinogen 3 because uroporphyrinogen 3 is not converted to coproporphyrinogen 3 note that uroporphyrinogen 3 decarboxylase is the one that converts decarboxylation of uroporphyrinogen 3 into coproporphyrinogen 3 so because of the deficient enzyme so simply uroporphyrinogen 3 accumulates and this uroporphyrinogen 3 will result into conversion of uroporphyrin 3 upon exposure to sunlight and that's what causes photosensitivity here because more and more uroporphyrin formation upon exposure to sunlight it will lead to increased degeneration of reactive oxygen species and they will damage the cell membrane especially the skin cell membrane leading to photosensitivity signs so that's what I have written here uroporphyrins react with molecular oxygen to form oxygen radicals and these oxygen radicals will cause severe damage to the skin so this disease primarily affects the skin leading to photosensitivity or photodermatitis blisters necrosis of the skin and gums itching swelling and increased growth of facial layer giving and hyperpigmentation and all that giving that face of a uh, monkey face which we have seen in congenital erythropoietic porphyria similar signs we are going to see here often patients with porphyria cutanea tarda do not complain of abdominal pain because neurological issues are less here it is more of photosensitivity issues then how do you differentiate uh, between these diseases which will show photosensitivity issue like in previous disease also in congenital erythropoietic porphyria there is a photosensitivity Porphyria cutanea tarda also there is a photosensitivity and both of them will show similar signs like monkey face and all that. So what helps in the diagnosis is what kind of urinary findings that we see here. So in patients with porphyria cutanea tarda large quantities of uroporphyrin 3 will be seen whereas in congenital erythropoietic porphyria large quantities of uroporphyrin 1 and coproporphyrin 1 will be seen number 1 isomer. Whereas here it is number 3 isomer. That is how uh, differentiation can be done. Alright, so this table is giving you uh, different features of all types of porphyria just as a condensed view here. So we have acute intermittent porphyria, congenital erythropoietic porphyria and porphyria cutanea tarda. These are the things that I have explained and other porphyrias are given in the for tabular form like hereditary coproporphyria, variegate porphyria and hereditary protoporphyria. Now let us move on to see acquired porphyria. So in the acquired porphyria, so the first one that I would like to go over is the lead poisoning. So it is the commonest cause of acquired porphyria and as you know from the IM biosynthesis pathway where I have mentioned lead inhibits two enzymes in the IM biosynthesis pathway. It is going to inhibit allodehydratase and also ferrochelatase. So lead it also inhibits the uptake of iron by immature red cells thereby it decreases heme synthesis. So increase in the blood levels of delta amino levulinate and zinc protoporphyrin 9 is seen in lead poisoning because when lead is there it is going to replace zinc which is present in allodehydratase and release that zinc and that zinc will go and bind with protoporphyrin 9 which is available because ferrochelatase enzyme which is responsible for conversion of protoporphyrin 9 into a heme molecule by introducing ferrous iron in the center and that is inhibited that process is inhibited by lead so protoporphyrin 9 is available now the zinc is released from all enzyme because 
lead is interacting with the allodeatory taste releasing the zinc from it and that zinc will go and bind to protoporphyrin 9 molecule making zinc protoporphyrin 9. So overall in the lead toxicity you are going to see elevation of delta ala and zinc protoporphyrin 9. So increased expression of delta ala in the urine but not PBG because PBG is not affected here because it is not made. An increase in urine and fecal coproporphyrins and zinc protoporphyrin 9 it will help in the diagnosis of lead poisoning. So patient shows anemia which is result of hemoglobin lack of hemoglobin synthesis retake that which is because of lack of hemoglobin biosynthesis. Peripheral blood smear shows basophilic stippling in the red blood cells. Energy production decreases because of lack of cytochromes for electron transport chain. Why? Because heme is necessary for cytochromes that are necessary for electron transport chain complexes. So here is the figure that will show you where exactly is uh, lead is acting on heme biosynthesis pathway. So it acts on the second reaction that is allodehydratase catalyzed reaction and also it acts on the last reaction which is catalyzed by ferrochelatase. Because of this, so there will be rise in ALA, delta ALA is increased and also a zinc that is released from binding of lead and that zinc will go and bind to protoporphyrin 9. So you get zinc proto porphyrin 9 molecule. So that is also elevated. So elevation of delta ALA and elevation of a zinc protoporphyrin 9 is seen in lead poisoning. Now coming to iron deficiency. Patients with iron deficiency can use zinc instead of iron as a substrate for ferrochelatase and because of this RBC lysis occurs due to increased quantities of zinc containing hemoglobin in place of ferrous containing hemoglobin which is an abnormal thing. So red cells contains increased amounts of protoporphyrin 9 because iron deficiency will lead to availability of protoporphyrin 9. So when ferrous iron itself is not available, so protoporphyrin 9 do not get that ferrous iron to be incorporated by ferrochelatase enzyme. So that's why it will lead to elevation of protoporphyrin 9. So both zinc hemoglobin and protoporphyrin 9 determinations are therefore used in the diagnosis of iron deficiency anemia. Remember that. So that's all about uh, hereditary porphyrias and acquired porphyrias. I hope this lecture has helped you in understanding this very important clinical disorders associated with heme biosynthesis pathways. Thank you.